Welcome everyone. Good morning. I see some more people trickling in, but we will um, get started. My name is Janelle Robinson. I am the Nanotech Wellness Coordinator and really excited to be here with you today to um, do our what's known as module three of the grievery, understanding grief. Um, so we are gonna have some time today um for lots of different things, but just to give you a heads up, there will be some time for personal reflection and journaling. So if that is um, something that works well for you to have a pen and paper handy, you can also use the notes app on your phone um, or your just type right into a Word doc in your computer, whatever works best for you for that time. Um, as people are joining us, uh, I would love if you could do a little chat check-in and let us know um, how you're feeling today. Just a couple words of uh, describe how you're feeling. It's really nice to kind of say hello to one another, say how we're feeling. And it's nice to me as a facilitator to kind of get an idea of how, get a read of the room, the virtual room um, where we are and just hear how everybody's doing this morning. So feel free to say hi in the chat. Let us know how you're doing. Um, and we will begin. So today's session, oh, I'm going to pull up. Sorry, I have so many tabs open. So I'm going to be sharing a lot today. Um, I'm going to pull up our just to have while I explain our day today. These are our agreed upon agreements. These are our agreements um, that we began with in module one. So I just wanted to pull those up just as a little refresher um, about the different group agreements that we set heading into this work together. And our aim today is to really explore grief literacy. And our goal is to have a shared understanding of grief across our organization. I hope is that we can really think about how we tend to grief in our community and practice having difficult conversations, which is what we all do in our work here at Nanatech. It's such a um, built in part of the jobs that um, all of us do here and to actually give some time to think really consciously about how we have those conversations, the language that we're using, um, the way that we're approaching them, how we're listening to one another, to the people that we serve and to our caregivers. And the way that we're going to do that today is we're going to take in some information together through a PowerPoint. Um, we'll also have time for reflection at the end. There will be time for personal reflection or journaling. Um, we'll also do breakout rooms again today, and then we'll have time for a large group share. So thank you all for being here today. I'm really, really excited. We're going to start with a meditation. But before we do that, I just wanted to let you all know, just a reminder that I'm really learning about this all with you. So I'm really walking this path with all of you. And as we get into more of this content for today, I would love to hear feedback from you. So we're going to be really looking at um, different language around conversations, different phrases, different ways that things can be worded. And this is, as I said, a learning process that we're all going through together. So if there's something in, you know, our our session today that you're like, hey, that I actually felt differently when somebody said that to me when I was grieving, like that actually felt good. Or actually somebody said that to me and it, it didn't land well, you know, things like that. I want this to be a place for um, discussion and conversation. And so just know that I'm kind of not teaching from this place of this is how we do things. I'm really walking this path with you all and I want it to feel that way. So just feel free to stop me at any point with feedback or questions or anything that you that might come up for you. So before we dive into the PowerPoint, let's take a few minutes to center together. Finding a comfortable seat wherever you are. You can either close your eyes if that's comfortable for you or you can just soften your gaze. And just take a moment for your body to get comfortable. And just notice what that means for you. You might have to make some adjustments. You might want to scoot towards the edge of your seat and sit up with a nice tall spine today, or it might feel good for you to kind of relax for a moment and maybe hug your knees into your chest wherever you are. Just notice the position that your body wants to be in for the next few minutes and know that you can change that at any time throughout this meditation. We'll begin with a few deep breaths together. Inhale through your nose. 
Let it go with a big sigh out your mouth. Do two more just like that. Inhale. And exhale. One more deep inhale. And then letting go of anything that you need to let go of to be fully present here in this moment. Begin to scan your body from the tip of your toes all the way up to the crown of your head. Feel your feet. If it helps, you can wiggle your toes. If you want, this might be a time to place your feet on the floor if that feels good or have them tucked up under you if that feels more comfortable. Bringing your awareness up your legs, to your knees, your thighs your hips, your belly, your back, chest, shoulders, arms, hands, neck, face, all the way up to the crown of your head. And whatever you find as you scan, can you hold it with compassion and kindness for yourself, for your body? Notice if it feels like a relief to be taking a few moments to connect with your body or if it feels uncomfortable, or if it feels like something else entirely. This might not be a place where you often let your awareness rest. Or maybe it is and it feels like saying hello to a friend. Notice if there are any sensations in your body that are calling for your attention. Might be because they feel good, or they're a little cranky this morning. And know that whatever you find, we're not here to fix it or judge it in this moment. We're just noticing. Doing, continuing to scan your body now from the top of your head all the way back down to your toes. And if you do find an area that is calling for your attention, Can you see if there's any messages held there for you? You find your attention start to drift because just come back to your body, come back to the sensations in your body, come back to whatever it is your body's trying to tell you in this moment. We'll stay here for another breath or two. Letting go of that, knowing this is a place you can always come back to and shifting your attention to your mind. Noticing the quality of your thoughts this morning. Notice if they are grasping for your attention, trying to pull you out of the present moment. Maybe they're moving quickly slowly this morning. Maybe there is one thought that's really trying to get a hold of your focus, maybe several. And just know that meditation is the practice not of clearing your mind, but of noticing when your attention gets called away and then bringing your attention back. So here we get to practice noticing our thoughts and knowing that in this moment, we don't need to react or respond to them. We just get to let them pass by. Again, whatever you find here in your mind this morning, can you hold it with kindness and compassion for yourself?
staying here for one more breath. And then bringing your attention to your breath. Without trying to change it or breathe in any certain way. Just notice your natural breath as it is right now. Notice where in your body you feel your breath. You might feel it deep in your belly. Feel the rise of your chest as you inhale. Or feel it at the tip of your nose as you exhale. You feel your mind wander, just bringing your attention back to your inhale and your exhale. And the more times we practice this, checking in with ourselves, you may find that your breath has a message for you. For me, it's often where I feel my breath in my body is a good indicator of how I may be feeling in any given moment. So at times of higher stress, I feel my belly is constricted. And it's harder for me to get a deep breath all the way down there. At times where I feel more peace, I can feel that breath really inflate my belly. And again, holding whatever you find without judgment, just as the practice of noticing and listening. Taking one more deep breath here. And then moving your awareness to your heart. If it helps, you can place one hand or both hands on your heart. And ask yourself, how am I feeling right now? See if you can feel the answer come from within rather than from the mind or from a thought about how you should be feeling. You might be feeling differently than you were when we checked in in the chat. Again, holding whatever you find here with compassion for yourself. See if you can really feel that answer come from somewhere within it might arise as a picture or a felt sense or a word and just holding it. And we'll take that inquiry just a little deeper, asking yourself, how has grief shown up for me at work? Or how do I anticipate that grief may show up for me at work? How has grief shown up for me at work? Or how do I anticipate that it may? And again, seeing if you can really feel that answer come from within, from a different place than we often answer our questions from. Knowing that grief is not limited to the loss of a loved one, but any loss. And just holding this space for each other for one more moment, holding together the grief that we all may have felt at work or the grief that we may anticipate that we may feel. Knowing that, holding it together in community. We'll take one more deep inhale through the nose. Exhale with a big sigh out your mouth. If your eyes are closed, you can gently open them. Come back to the room, to our computers together. Oh, thanks, everybody. I need that just as much as I hope <laughs> many of you feel that that is helpful in the beginning. But as a facilitator, that's really helpful for me, too. So thank you. <sighs> so shifting gears a little bit, um, we are going I'm going to pull up our PowerPoint. If there are any questions about the meditation or anything else before I get started, please feel free to raise your hand or drop it into the chat. 
and use this moment. Anytime that I am um, shifting technology, it's your cue to take a sip of water and a deep breath. So <laughs> everybody go ahead and take a sip of your water, take a deep breath. Okay. So I am, can everybody see my screen? Okay. As I have this open, I can't see the chat as well um, as I can when I'm not sharing my screen. So please feel free to stop me at any point um, or raise a hand or if there's something in the chat that I'm missing, um, Rob, please let me know. Well, we'll all take one more deep breath together and we will begin. We all experience grief. Grief accompanies any loss, no matter how big or small. Hey, Janelle. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. I was. I thought you froze for a second. My my apologies. Oh, thank you. No, no. <laughs> please, please, <laughs> please make sure I'm not frozen. Okay. <laughs> my fault. Loss includes. Anything from health, home, identity, family, friendships, climate change, career, and more. Which means that grief can also include anything from health, home, identity, family, friendships, climate change, pets, career, and more. There are six great gates of grief that we will be learning about, and I'm going to read a little bit about each of them. And this is really oh, an important way of understanding that we all come to grief through different doorways and that it isn't just the loss of a loved one, which might be what comes to mind initially as we're thinking about grief, but there are many different ways that people find their way into grief. Number one, everything we love, we lose. Everything is a gift and nothing lasts. To realize this truth is to live with a willingness to live on life's terms and not try to deny simply what is. Grief acknowledges that everything we love, we will lose. This grief is most commonly recognized with the death of a loved one and oftentimes the only thing we think we can or should grieve. To the best parts of us that have not known love. These are the parts of us that have been cast aside in order to survive. What we didn't receive from birth on and the systems that reinforce or prohibit us from coming into our full selves. This particular grief has a great influence on the degree to which we feel welcome in the world. I find that this one is especially important as we think about the people that we serve. Number three, sorrows of the world. This grief is collective grief. It is unprecedented. Within it lies injustice, violence, genocide, and the dying of the planet, the natural world, which is also referred to as eco-grief for what we expected but did not receive. The loss of village, purpose, and connection. The inherent interdependence that hasn't come to fruition during this lifetime. Five, losses and sorrows through lineage and ancestors. This grief is also known as ancestral, or, ancestral grief or ancestral trauma, that which gets passed down generation after generation. It also refers to the ways in which we do not honor or recognize or remember sometimes for that matter, our ancestors, and how often we forget the land and watersheds that are also our ancestors. Six, the harms we've caused. This is a grief that has been named in recent years. It recognizes the harm we inflict on each other as well as ourselves and the corresponding repair that must follow and starts with allowing ourselves to grieve. We do not enter the halls of grief through just one door. Many of us carry many griefs if we even acknowledge them as grief. 
As we experience loss, we may remind ourselves of these basic facts. No two people grieve the same, and we are all doing our best under the conditions within which we entered this world and are currently living in it. So I'll just take, take a deep breath there. And if, again, if there are any questions or thoughts, please feel free to stop me as we move along. Loss also impacts your support system, financial security, hopes and dreams, relationship, relationships, sense of well-being, and self-worth. They're often referred to as secondary losses. It's like a shock wave of loss. Grief is not something that has to be resolved, fixed, or stopped similar to how we were holding what we found in our meditation today. There's no one size fits all. Grief comes with being human. Grief impacts all of us on emotional, physical, mental, and spiritual levels. It's a full body, full being experience. Grief calls for a lot of humility and compassion towards self and others. Grief is also a skill and capacity that is essential to being in relationship. I'm just gonna repeat that again, because it strikes me every time. Grief is also a skill and capacity that is essential to being in relationship. A skill and capacity that can be cultivated through attention and practice. And that's what we hope to do together through these grievery sessions. Meaning we allow it to show up. Acknowledge it. Yet most of the time, grief isn't visible. We might not even identify it as grief. We may just feel sad. But grief is much more than sadness. Grief includes anger, guilt, joy, loneliness, anxiety, relief, overwhelm, confusion, frustration, numbness, fear, hope, resentment, yearning, and envy. And I would love for you to just take a moment to look at this list and see if anything jumps out at you as surprising or that rings really true, or maybe if there's anything that you feel is missing from this list. You can just quietly notice that. Or feel free to put it in the chat. When our grief cannot be spoken, it falls into the shadows and re-arises in us as, as symptoms. And this is a quote from Francis Weller. The most common physical symptoms include loss of sleep, forgetfulness, inability to concentrate, tiredness, irritation, or mood swings. And you can think about if you can connect to any of these as they've shown up in yourself or in your work with the people that we serve or our caregivers or coworkers. Our culture prizes positivity over emotional truth. Emotions like sadness are not negative, they are normal. A failure to acknowledge difficult emotions through forced false positivity is a failure to see both ourselves and others. It's an unseeing of our humanity. Quote from Susan David. Forced positivity equals resistance to grief. Resistance to grief includes the dismissing or diminishing some, someone's experience, including your own. Resistance to grief may also sound like you're robbing people of hope. Go tend to this on your own. It's unprofessional to be emotional at work. We don't have time to listen to this. 
you're encouraging people to fester. This is TMI. Try to look on the bright side. You're better off. It'll all change. And maybe it was meant to be. And a quote is coming to mind for me as I'm, I'm reading this and as we're talking about grief in the workplace, um, that comes from Adam Grant and I'm gonna paraphrase it, but that as we show up as fully human, we still are expecting, have the expectation that we can all be in kindness one, with one another, right? That we can hold both things at once and so that we can hold space for grief within the workplace while still treating each other with kindness. and. It's nuanced to kind of see the difference between a forced positivity and and still making space for grief while also holding each other in kindness and compassion at work. It's the quote is something like, um, you know, grief is not uh, an excuse to treat each other poorly, right? I'll pull it up in a little bit later. Or maybe we say nothing at all. Saying nothing can feel like I don't care. Saying nothing can look like my emotional comfort is more important. This is another quote from Adam Grant. Saying nothing can feel like abandonment. Reminder, tending to grief is a skill and a capacity that can be cultivated. It will feel awkward and that's okay. Remember, we don't need to show up perfectly, but we need practice with this. No one is an expert. Lead with curiosity. And if it is helpful, as we read through these prompts, um, you can kind of put yourself in the mindset of your work and maybe a conversation that you might be having at a home visit or with a coworker. Lead with curiosity. What felt the most difficult this week? Would you like to talk through ways to address that? Or does talking about it feel more helpful? Anything else on your mind today? It sounds like XYZ experience was really stressful. Is that true for you? Grief can change day to day, minute by minute, and can be impacted by new developments in the news, diagnoses, impending holidays, and more. A note about grief at work. When an employee shows up to meetings, their grief might be present as being quiet because they're exhausted, sobbing because they're sad, being super engaged because they're grateful for the distraction, or a combination of all. Hint, take the lead. Take their lead. Additional words that can be helpful. I'm sorry you're going through this. I'm here for you. I can't possibly know how you feel in this moment, but I'm here to listen. I have no idea what to say, but I care about you. That's my favorite. Do you want to tell me about X, Y, and Z? Can you tell me how your family and culture recognize the death of a loved one or recognize grief and loss? Do you need help connecting with resources to support you? Another addition here um, that we've talked a little bit about, um, it has a few names. Uh, I am familiar with sword or blanket, but also um, comfort or solution. And so asking the person what it is that they need, you know, are they just needing a listening ear and some comfort or do they really want to walk through some possible solutions with you? Um, and knowing that we might, you know, the person might have an answer for what it is that they need in that moment and we can offer either way. And using that language throughout, you know, with your coworkers or um, with your caregivers or the people we serve can be really helpful so that a person can choose. Because, you know, well, I'll use I statement, sorry. I know for me, you know, some, Sometimes I might just need to vent and then somebody's offering solutions. I'm like, wait, no, I just wanted somebody to hear me and like tell me it's all going to be okay or vice versa. And so being really explicit with that and having that become part of our culture and language at Nanatuck can be really helpful. 
words that are less than helpful. Platitudes such as everything happens for a reason or they're in a better place now. Anything that starts with at least or you should. I know how you feel. Immediately sharing your own personal experience. I know what you've been through. Don't cry. Be strong. It could be worse. They wouldn't want you to be sad. The fundamental experience of grief is universal. Compassion, empathy, sympathy, sensitivity, and support go a long way. Asking questions is okay. More than words offer support. Or just listen without the need to fix or solve. Grief and loss can make us feel vulnerable and porous. Be rigorous with your self-care. And this goes for if you are in a time of grief yourself or if you are supporting others through grief, either in your work or your life. Some practices to support yourself. Set boundaries. Get rest and or sleep. Try not to take rejection personally. Establish a routine. Focus on basic well-being and nourishment. Get some movement or fresh air. Get some time in nature. Maybe limit the news for a while. Ask for help or share how you feel. Seek support and community. And remember, be with your grief. Tending to grief requires us to be with it in all its misery and messiness. Grief is a lifelong journey. The acute pain will subside, but the pain of loss never fully leaves us. Grief needs expression. Paint, sculpt, throw clay, dance, bake, journal, whatever feels right, and reach out to tr trusted friends or family members who get it. Healthy grieving involves moving back and forth between loss and restoration. The journey through grief is not linear. Grief can break you open to a new you if you let it. In early grief, the change to your life is unwelcome, but stepping into grief is an alchemical process. Okay, so I'm going to, I'll share this with you all, and then I will, I'll leave this up for here for a minute, but then I'm going to stop sharing my screen so I can see your faces. Um, so we are going to start with um, some personal reflection before we go into small groups. And the prompt is just, what did you learn about yourself? So just taking everything that we that we went through, anything that came up for you as I was going through that, um, and just taking some time right now to reflect on what did you learn about yourself that could be personally um, thinking about your role at work, whatever that may be, um, and really kind of reflecting on that and thinking about it. And you can either do that through journaling if that works well for you. You can just sit quietly in reflection. Um, whatever the best means of reflection are for you, we're going to have some really intentional time to do that for right now. Um, and I'm going to put some music on and have it be a nice, a nice time for for quietness and reflection. You can also use these next few minutes. I encourage everybody to take a uh, drink of water if you need to go to the bathroom before we go to breakout rooms. This is a good time to do that as well. Um, if you have any questions, also please let me know. And um, if that is feeling good to you, that prompt, and you want to take it a step further, so the question is, I'm going to put it in the chat too. Um, what did I learn about myself? And then what did I learn that I would like to explore more about? So that can either be about yourself or about something that you learned in the presentation or something you have a question about. So I'm going to put these all done in a second. I'm going to share my screen again for some music.
Okay. Closing out that personal reflection time, and I'm going to send you to breakout rooms, which is my favorite part. Um, so I, um, a couple things. One, one thing that came up last time we did breakout rooms, there was a couple people that as they were going in, their cameras weren't working. So if everybody could try to just turn your cameras on really quickly so that as you head in, it's already on. We're just going to try that out and see if that helps with that little glitch that we had for a couple people last time. And then I get to see all your faces before I whoosh you away into your rooms, which is an added bonus. Um, Okay, so same prompts. So whatever you were just reflecting on, and I put the question in the chat. What did you learn about yourself? And what did you learn that you would like to explore further? And these can be personal reflections, professional reflections, whatever is feeling um, that you're feeling most kind of called into which area um, in this moment. And so we're going to spend about nine whole minutes in, in our breakout rooms. People were wanting more last time. So I tried to make a little, a few extra minutes here. Um, we'll make it an even 10 minutes and then I will bring you all back and we will have time for some large group share. Um, so if somebody from your group would be willing to share, um, with the larger group about, you know, some things you had in common or some differences or anything that you learned from each other. And, um, let's see, I'm actually just going to change this. There we go. So there should be about three to four people in each room. And I'm going to click the button and I will send you on your way. Have fun. I'll see you soon. <laughs> Welcome back. I love hearing like the chatter as people come. come back. <laughs> so fun. OK. Lots of people reappearing. Okay, I think everybody's back. So I would love to hear um, any reflections you had from your breakout room, even if it was what it was like to be in a breakout room, whatever it is that you feel like you wanna share as a large group right now that you feel like everybody could really benefit from hearing. Feel free, and if, um, yeah, who wants to be the brave soul who goes first, Gretchen. Please count on you. Thank you. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, sure. uh, so we had a small group um, and we kind of reflected on how it was helpful to talk about things to say and not to say. And one of the things that uh, that struck us was that uh, your, your parents wouldn't want you to be sad. And I think if you know the person well enough and know what their parents were like, sometimes that does help. Uh, and like you had said in the beginning, that some things do work and some things don't. Um, so it's hard to know, but I think if you if you knew the person who passed away was a vibrant, happy person, then you, I think that does work. And another thing we talked about were um, how it's difficult with different cultures. Um, mm -hmm. Like sometimes, you know, we're not all just, you know, from Western Mass or Massachusetts or whatever. And so uh, sometimes you don't want to step on any toes, but you want to be kind and you want to be empathetic. Um, and then we also talked about uh, loss that wasn't a person. Um, so losing, you know, a family home or uh, what have you, and, and the grief that you know, that it's okay to feel grief around those things. And that really is grieving when you when you do something like that. I leave a home that you've been in for a long time, even though it might be your decision or, or what happens. So it was a good discussion. Great. Thank you, Gretchen. And um, a couple of things from that. One is that I have a resource I'm going to pull up and share. Um, about it's like a, a really high overview about some um, cultural approaches to grief, but our DEI and B committee is really excited to dive into this more fully. Um, and 
so lots of kind of like crossover happening between the grief work and DEI and B um, working together. And so we're actually looking to have an event over the next few months where we where we have a much fuller conversation and we want to hear from people at Nanatech the different ways that the cultures that are represented within our community approach grief. Because I am, this is something that as we dive into this work that I'm really, really curious to learn more about and to have us learn from one another because we have such a diverse community at Nanatech and both with our our uh, community of staff and the people that we serve and our care caregivers and I think there's a great learning experience that we can all have from one another and so um, we have a much larger discussion and intentional discussion coming up through DEI and B to explore that fully Gretchen so thank you. Awesome. Yeah. Um, does anybody else want to share? Dylan. Um, one thing I, I mentioned in our breakout group was um, our <laughs> in this field, we work with a lot of people who grieve um, and we are constantly going through that and the secondary grief that we take on from that person and, and trauma and things like that. But it, it, it re it brings up things in our lives that we have to then go through that process again. And it's happening almost constantly and that can be very wearing i think we forget about that when we think about burnout for people and and what that looks like long term because we do see a, a quick turnaround in this field generally and that could play a role into it like you're constantly and, and not that it's negative but feeling like bombarded with people's issues or struggles that you take on and how can you work on that but you're going through similar struggles so it it's um something i think we should emphasize more um as we move forward because we are taking on everyone's trauma and everyone's grief um, on a day-to-day -day basis yeah thank you so much for for naming that and it's this interesting kind of parallel that we're holding and that so much of this work that we're doing together dives into where we're simultaneously holding grief for the people in our community, the people that we serve, our caregivers, our, our coworkers, but that there's also all this internal work that needs to be like keep happening in order to kind of keep showing up and doing that more fully. So it's like this kind of um, need to like, I think it, it was in there like for need for both like grief and restoration. And it's kind of this like ebb and flow and, and really needing to like name that and honor that. And um, as we continue moving forward, and I'll talk a little bit about what that's going to look like in a moment, all the, the, the kind of like upcoming sessions have that space where we're really thinking about how, continuing to think about how do we show up and support the people that we serve are in our community, but simultaneously, like what's the internal work that we also need to be doing in order to tend to our own grief and create resilience for ourselves to be able to keep showing up for one another. And um really one of the intentions of the grievery is to um you know help create communities that show up for each other with care and compassion in our very first session i named that that's something that nana tuck does in ways that i haven't seen other places and my hope is to help us all be able to keep doing that because just as you named dylan like the levels of burnout in this field are very, very high and the levels of turnout and oh, turnover in this field are very, very high and it's such important work that we're doing. So how do we continue to show up for our community to hold grief, to tend to grief, but then to continue to tend to ourselves and what does that look like? This kind of continuance of like showing up and then tending to yourself as well. So thank you so much for naming that and I hope that um, we can continue a conversation about that. It's so important. Does anybody else want to share before we close? Feel free as I um, do our kind of closing housekeeping, feel free to drop anything in the chat that might be kind of any any burning last moment things that anyone would like to share. Um, I did want to kind of let you all know what next steps will look like because this was our final session of what we've kind of deemed the sessions that we really wanted everybody to attend so that we do have that um, shared language across our community and that and that this is really kind of it's just the beginning of a discussion right like this we can in an hour we can only dive into so much and so I'm my hope is that 
Um, you'll be taking this back to your conversations within your programs, within, you know, your teams that you work with. And moving forward, um, we're kind of moving into the what we're calling like the more like optional portion of of the modules, but there are still we've covered three. There are still modules four through 11 to come that we'll be scheduling soon. And we're asking for people to kind of make a commitment to be able to attend these sessions if it's something that they're interested in to attend as many of them um, live as they can, because as you've seen, there's such a um, participatory element to these these sessions but we're going to be covering everything from values active listening personal care plan mindfulness compassion boundaries rituals and a communal care plan and so if you're interested in deepening your understanding of grief if you're interested in really learning to how to tend to your own grief so you can continue to show up you know can tend to that what's showing up for you with the people that we serve and what it brings up for you in yourself and if you are interested also in looking at how organizationally as a community how nonatuck tends to grief our different rituals areas in our organization um, we kind of call them thresholds. So beginnings and endings and, and different areas within our organization. And as people come and go and, and leave our organization and our lives, like how are we really pausing to honor those things? So if you're interested in kind of continuing on to both strengthen your understanding of grief, strengthen your ability to hold grief in your job, strengthen your ability to tend to your own grief, and then also to have that larger conversation about how Nonatuck as a community shows up and um, holds grief for one another, then I would love, love, love if you would join us for the rest of those modules. I'm going to be sending out an email shortly to kind of invite people into that. Um, and if you feel like that is something that you can make a commitment to, we're going to talk about scheduling and all of that. It's just going to be once a, once a month. Um, same thing for an hour. We might add a little bit, like an extra 15 minutes on. We'll see um, just for more of that group participation. But um, if this, if any of this really spoke to you and you would like to further this conversation, I would love to have you there. So keep an eye out for that email. The other one thing that I do want to add, I'm also going to be sending out um, an email with our mental health resources. You have access to um, a really wonderful array of mental health resources as an employee of Nonatuck. And um, Amanda from our HR department has made a really beautiful flyer that has those resources listed out and how you can access them. And so anytime that we're talking about these things, I really encourage you, if things are coming up for you that you feel like you need to talk to somebody further about or look into further, start with what we offer at Nonatuck. There is you know, but from our EAP to all of these other resources, there's really, really great resources to support you. So just as kind of a follow-up to this conversation, I'll be sending that out um, momentarily if there's anything that you feel like you need to kind of look at further. So um, it is 1202. That has been my, I'm always two minutes over, but it's one of those important things at the end. So please um, let me know if you have any questions. I'll be here for another about 10 minutes or so if anybody has questions. Thank you for being here and I hope to connect soon.